Hello and welcome to Shade Tree Cardiology. This video is going to cover the basics of the inferior MI. So what is the first thing we notice whenever we're looking at an inferior wall MI, which is to say an inferior STEMI? It's that giant honking ST elevation, right? Two, three in AVF look like, good God! And then you've got some reciprocal depression in one in AVL. So we know that the inferior wall of the heart is supplied by the right coronary artery. So what all does the right coronary artery supply? It supplies the SA node, the AV node, uh, the right ventricle, and parts of the left ventricle, as well as other stuff, okay? But again, we're sticking to the basics. So what would we expect if we have an occluded right coronary artery? We expect conduction disturbances, okay? So all kinds of arrhythmias, PVCs, we're going to expect bradycardia because the blood supply to the SA node is being choked off, all right? If right ventricular involvement is significant, we're going to see some JVD with that, all right? And remember that 4 out of 10 inferior STEMIs have right ventricular involvement. Some sources even say much higher, as, as many as 50%, okay? Nitrates are contraindicated in these people. Unless, okay, and you'll see however at the bottom of the screen, unless you have a system that has protocols in place to manage this sort of thing. Things like fluid loading to increase the preload prior to nitrate administration has shown to be successful, but stick to your protocols and what your medical director allows, all right? So whenever you're looking at right ventricular involvement, 15 lead is the golden standard, okay? You need to confirm that right ventricular involvement because you can have an inferior wall MI without it, in which case nitrates are good to go, right? So if you're going to take a proper 15 lead, one of the best ways to do that is like you see on the screen. Take V4, V5, and V6 and place them as shown here. By the way, this picture came from EMS12lead.com, a great site. I recommend it to everybody I see. All right, so <clears throat> what are some other red flags where you might actually see uh, or something that would indicate there's right ventricular involvement, all right? So on your normal 12 lead, if you saw ST elevation in V1, that's a good indicator there's some pretty heavy right ventricular involvement. If you see ST elevation in lead 3 that is greater than the ST elevation in lead 2, taller, more of it, more millimeters, all right, that would be an indication that there's right ventricular involvement. And then if you saw descending QRS height in leads 3, 2, and 1, meaning you have the tallest QRS in lead 3, Next tallest in lead two, shortest in lead one. That's another good indicator on your normal 12 lead. There's right ventricular involvement. Either way, you need to run the 15 lead, but these are good things to be on the lookout for, okay? All right, guys, if you like the video, uh, don't forget to click the like button, comment, and subscribe, and then tell me what you want to learn about down in the comments below. Thanks a ton.